855 uh, free is the toll-free number here, and we've got uh, another gentleman sitting in with us. It's going to talk to us about something that, Mark, you and I have become pretty familiar with over the uh, over the last year or so. Year, what, a year and a half, maybe, that we've been talking about Bitcoins? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> definitely the last year, and Bitcoin's pretty exciting. I I think it's a great technology. I've, I've been using them myself, and as have, uh, as have you, Mark, uh, we've, of course, talked about bitinstant.com, which is one of the uh, the new websites that's out there to help you do transactions with Bitcoin. To get Bitcoins, yeah. Yeah, to get your hands on some of them. And we've got Ira Miller uh, joining us here. And Ira, you're going to be speaking tomorrow in the afternoon at 2.30, it looks like, uh, on the subject of Bitcoins. And you are one of the programmers that's involved in Bitcoins. Am I right about that? I'm not actually involved in the... Pull a little closer if you don't mind. Uh, I'm not actually involved in the, the Bitcoin client. I write tools uh, that use Bitcoin uh, you know, marketing platforms, merchant services, all sorts of things. What is the uh, Bitcoins for dummies? Uh, you know, what's the elevator speech on Bit- Bitcoins? Uh, the elevator speech is that it's uh, person-to-person money. Uh, you know, there's no middleman. Uh, funds can't be frozen. No fees. Uh, it's just two people that want to exchange something. How did, how did you get into it? What turned you on to Bitcoin? Uh, well, that that nature of it, uh, that is peer to peer, open source. Uh, you know, the, I don't like middlemen um, telling me what to do, mm-hmm. where I can spend my money, how I can spend my money, uh, anything of that nature, or how much of my money there is. You know, the the supply of it even. Uh, so, bitcoins are a digital currency. They exist online. That's correct. We had somebody call, I think it was last night, maybe it was the night before. What happens if the Internet goes down in some kind of cataclysmic, I don't, I don't know, comets? Um, you know, what, whatever happens that makes the Internet uh, go down, the backbone is what he referred to. What happens? Could you use Bitcoins at that point? Uh, you actually could. Uh, it'd be a little harder. Uh, you can use uh, Bitcoins in person. There's something called Cassius Coins, which are uh, a physical Bitcoin that I can I can hand you just like I, I, I hand you. Right here. Yeah. yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. So you're, you're familiar with it. But... Uh, Really, what, what Bitcoin is, is it's money based on the scarcity of mathematics. So, you know, it's a rare number. Uh, as long as you have uh, the only copy of that number, then you've got the money. I think it's a great technology, and there's some really interesting uses that uh, the marketplace, the free marketplace, is developing on this, because the Bitcoin market is an un- unencumbered market. There is no government regulation. There's no uh, you know, controlling central bank. There's, uh, there's nobody that can tell you you can't use a Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. You, you know, where, whereas if you go into a bank, you've got to have social security number. You've got to jump through whatever. Pr- Transactions Oops. don't cost anything, and you don't have to deal with the great Satan of the Internet, PayPal. I mean, you know, it, true. When, when it comes to... As a, a vendor, when you're selling online with PayPal, essentially, you, you can you could be screwed five ways to Sunday. I mean, they can do you know they can just take your, the money back that you've been paid. They can do all kinds of things to you. It's like dealing with credit card companies. You know, people always talk about banks and, and PayPal when uh, they're talking about money, privacy, things like that. But it's it's not just online. It's not just banks. Uh, you know, you you go to Home Depot. You go to uh, you know King Supers uh, anywhere, and you slide your credit card. Uh, they've got your name, your your zip code, you know, your obviously your credit card number, you know, way more information than you'd be comfortable giving anyone. With Bitcoin, there's none of that information. It's no. just, it's all, I don't know how you describe it. It's just this big long tag of numbers and letters that identifies an account, basically, that has no information attached to it whatsoever. Yep. So one of the th- concerns that I had with Bitcoin, and we actually discussed it over dinner this evening, is currencies throughout uh, human history, barring, say, uh, gold and silver, but fiat currencies specifically, man, currencies made by man, uh, have had their life cycles. They've, you know, mm-hmm. they've risen and they've fallen. Some of them have been controlled by governments. Some of them, most, m- most of them are controlled by governments. Some of them haven't. Bitcoins, surely there must be, you know, I mean, we're seeing them rise now. They've mm-hmm. gotten past the initial stages to, their, to the point where, you know, people beyond, say, just the early adopters are, are getting into them. I, I can use them. I know they're not that complicated. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, they're cryptology. Right? So somebody's written some kind of puzzle or something, right? Mm-hmm. And at some point, somebody's going to break that puzzle. And then when they break that puzzle, my Bitcoins are worthless. What are you going to do about that, Ira? Oh, well, I mean, you, you make the puzzle harder, if you will. Okay. Uh, you know, so they can change? Well, I mean, for instance, you, you do online banking right now. It uses do. much of the same uh, cryptographic technology to 
Uh, Actually, yeah. my wife does it. I'm not really allowed to touch too much money. But. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks well, you, you can take that power back, too, with Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it to her for a reason. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Well, I, I mean, basically, you know, uh, all secure communication is, is based off of a, a few protocols of uh, encryption. Uh, you know, so that your message is only uh, readable by the person it's intended for. Uh, and as, uh, you know, the technology to break that encryption improves, you know, we'll improve the technology to protect the messages. So Bitcoin is open source, and it's currently protected by, what's, what's the standard SAU2 or something you said? Uh, SHA2. SHA2, which is what the highest, what the standard that the government uses for their cryptographic yeah, that's stuff. that's correct. That's uh, I, I believe a, a NIST standard uh, okay. that it's been around for a little while. We're about to come out with SHA three. Right. Now, wait so, a minute. So wait, the government's involved in this? What are you talking about? No, the government. You, this is a cryptographic standard by which the wealthiest organizations in the world use to hide their stuff. This it, is the highest level of cryptography. It's actually yeah. an open source standard too. Is is all cryptographic? So when, so the government didn't come up with this. Is what you're saying? No, no. Okay. Uh, they've simply uh, put their stamp of approval on it. It's what they use for military communications. And the government couldn't come up with something this good, apparently. No. Uh, so when this is not. broken, when S, S, they what can't is even it? use email. What is SH? SHA. When SHA2 is broken, and it will be, <clears throat> HH3, SHA3, SH, whatever it is you're saying. <laughs> Two and three. 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 Yeah. When, when three comes out, they'll that'll just be slipped right into bitcoins by the because it's open source and it'll be adopted and it'll just be slipped right in so bitcoins have the ability to into the future evolve forward because when it comes to the puzzle making people can make the the cryptography better than the breaking uh, uh computers out there right is that that's I'm right. doing my best man i don't know no <laughs> I, you know <laughs> Uh, cryptography has uh, been been staying ahead of the code breakers for uh, decades. As long as there's been cryptography, right? <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, but particularly since World War II, you know, in the introduction of, of uh, Turing machines, if you will. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, yeah, now we've, we're all using Turing machines. We carry them around in our pockets and stuff. So you're involved in BitInstant.com, right? Uh, we're, we're working with them right now on uh, a way to get bit, make it easier for people to get Bitcoins. And what would that be? I mean, what's, can you tell us about that? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, the the system we're working on, and BitInstant has a lot of this. They, they deserve a, a lot of the credit. Uh, you you'll be able to deposit cash in a bank, uh, you know, major banks all over the all over the country, uh, and simply get bitcoins in your email for it. Wow, uh, that's pretty amazing. Makes now, sense. how does that? I mean, do you have to cut a deal with these big banks? How does that work exactly? I mean, you you've got a bank account. You can deposit money into it. Uh, mm -hmm. Once you verify that the money's there, then send out bitcoins uh, worth the same amount of money. Neat. I, I trust that you guys know what you're doing because the, it's, it's just amazing what's happening in the, in the world of bitcoins. I mean, so many new services are always coming about, and some of them come and some of them go. So it's always good to keep your own bitcoins in your own wallet. We've seen there's a little yeah. bit of instability, and it's, it's a new marketplace. And so some of, the, uh, some of the organizations out there, I question how long they'll be viable for. Um, so, you know, buyer beware when it comes to the bitcoin. Uh, where, where do you, you store them? It's yeah. very, really important. We okay. use coins. Dot org will tell you more about it if you're brand new to it. But Ira, if folks want to learn more, they should be here tomorrow because then they can talk to you directly and ask much more technical, smart questions right. uh, than we'll be able to ask you on this program. Yeah, two thirty. Two thirty tomorrow afternoon here at the Liberty Forum in Nashua, New Hampshire, at the Crown Plaza Hotel. Beautiful hotel. Glad you're here. By the way, first time. Uh, not your first time in New Hampshire. This is my first it time is in New Hampshire. First time in New wonderful Hampshire. state. You're going to enjoy this it's this weekend. Great people here, as you probably already figured out. There's more coming up here. Hour number three is on the way. Thanks for sitting in with us. More on the way. This is Free Talk Live.